Please identify yourself. Is someone there? <gasps> Resident Evil Zero takes place before the events that transpired in the original game. And it starts with the Stars Bravo team being sent into the outskirts of Raccoon City where they have to investigate a series of killings where the witnesses say they saw monsters and other various sorts of horrid creatures involved. Uh, one member of this team, Rebecca Chambers, uh, while searching through this area, finds an overturned MP Jeep uh, where she finds a document that says that these, you know, these military police were escorting a prisoner named Billy Cohen. Uh, after exploring a little further, she finds a train that's just stopped in the middle of the tracks. And she goes inside and she finds that there's all these dead bodies. But upon closer examination, she finds that the bodies aren't all that dead. And they start getting up out of their seats and they start attacking her. And thus begins Resident Evil Zero. Early on in the game, Rebecca will meet up with Billy. And this is basically the premise behind the gameplay is that you can use both characters uh, during the same time at any time during the game, except for when they're forced to separate. Uh, when both characters are close together, you can order the computer-controlled character uh, to attack when you're confronted by enemies. You can order it to stand still, or you can tell the computer-controlled character to stay in an entirely different room. You'll also be able to exchange items between the two, which will become very useful later on in the game when you have to use certain items to solve puzzles. Interestingly, uh, both characters in the game, Rebecca Chambers and Billy, have been given sort of different skills and abilities. Uh, Billy's able to absorb much more damage than Rebecca. He's also able to push crates and other such things so that he's able to solve those specific types of puzzles. Whereas Rebecca's only real special ability is to mix chemicals, which you won't, won't really use till later on in the game. As such, Rebecca usually ends up becoming a pack mule of the game. Uh, you use her to basically keep all of Billy's items, some of the larger weapons like the grenade launcher, the shotgun. Um, she can hold on to those while Billy can hold on to all the smaller items or switch, switch items when he needs to use them. Plus, since Billy can absorb more damage, you'll always have him out in front of Rebecca doing most of the firing while you have her pushed to the back, maybe giving some support fire with her default weapon, but generally, you know, you don't want to get her involved in the fight because she can die really quickly. The two-player system also extends to puzzles, but it doesn't really quite live up to the potential that it had. Uh, usually what happens is one character will serve as sort of a statue uh, where they have to stand on a tile or something that opens a door while the other character runs in and grabs some sort of special item. Other times the two characters will be separated so you'll have to find a certain item with Rebecca but you have to find some way to get it to Billy so basically what you do is you search around for some sort of like elevator device you put the item in there, you send it down, make it so that Billy finds the 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 other side of the elevator device so he can grab the item, go in, solve the puzzle, and join the, the two back together again. So the two-player system really doesn't make all that much of a difference to the Resident Evil gameplay. It's just they're the same type of puzzle that you've been doing before in all the other Resident Evil games. It's just that instead of an actual statue now, you have a character there. And instead of, you know, having to hunt around for items yourself, you know, you have two characters to hunt around for items. It's not that much of a difference. Another new feature that Capcom brought to Resident Evil Zero is the ability to drop items wherever you want. Obviously, a big complaint about previous Resident Evil games was that uh, you always had to put items in the chest and you had to go back to the chest in order to pick them back up. But really, this becomes the same problem in Resident Evil Zero. You usually end up putting items in a safe area, you know, where you can save the game so that when you restart, you can, you know, decide what items you want to bring with you the next time you go out. So really, you run into the same problem of dropping items in a specific room, going out, running back and forth constantly to get items. It doesn't really change all that much. Um, there are times, though, where you know, you'll come across a special item and you have something like an ink ribbon in your inventory. Yeah, you can just drop the ink ribbon so that you can pick up the special item. Things like that, it makes it a little bit easier. But in general, you just run into this trap of dropping items in a specific room and having to run back to them again later because you'll need to use them in a puzzle somewhere down the line. Resident Evil Zero looks similar to its GameCube counterpart, the remake of the original Resident Evil. Uh, you'll, have, you'll see highly detailed pre-rendered backgrounds that have small bits of animation in them thanks to a technology that Capcom and Nintendo developed to kind of seamlessly integrate FMV into pre-rendered backgrounds. Uh, this is especially noticeable in the train level where you see bottles sway back and forth as the train's moving. You see little ripples of water in like pots and pans and such. 
Uh, when you go outside the train, you'll see the forest like rushing by you as well as rain effects coming down on the character. Um, also, the lighting in this particular level is really well done. You know, when you're inside of a train, you go past a light source, it just kind of flickers in through the windows. You get kind of the same effect here, and it really helps create the atmosphere when you sort of see a light flicker on the top of one of the corpses sitting in a chair. Uh, when you get outside the train levels, the, the environments start to look a little more static. There isn't quite as much movement. Um, when you go outside, you'll see like leaves blowing around in the wind as well as weeds, things like that. But when you're inside rooms and such, there isn't quite as much movement. Uh, they still look really detailed, but you'll definitely notice that they're a little bit more static. The character models for Billy and Rebecca look excellent, almost on the verge of being CG quality. Uh, and the enemies look great as well, you know, everything from the zombie dogs to just regular zombies, giant spiders, uh, monkeys that look like they were ripped straight from the movie Congo. There's all kinds of cool looking enemies in the game and they're really detailed. The sound in the game is excellent as well, uh, you know, you get sort of the music tracks that are there just to sort of enhance the ambient sounds that are in the room or whatever. But then at, at certain times you have uh, you have it where the music will sort of take over the game when you encounter these zombies that are made entirely out of leeches. You know, you'll hear this crazy sort of orchestral music that just really, you know, makes your heart pump. There's also plenty of good sound effects, you know, when Rebecca and Billy walk over certain types of surfaces, it'll change. Also, you'll be able to hear, like, scuffling of zombies as well as, you know, general movements of any enemies that are in the room, which again, just all help really create an excellent atmosphere for the game. Despite all the additions Capcom has included in Resident Evil Zero, such as the, t the two character system, as well as the ability to drop items anywhere, it's still Resident Evil. The controls are really clunky, it takes forever to turn around. Resident Evil isn't the type of game where it's, you know, run and gun, you need to be moving around at all times, but it's really sort of frustrating uh, just to try and run past enemies and only to have them grab onto you because the controls just aren't precise enough. Also, the game uses the same save system with the ink ribbons, uh, but usually there's plenty of them around, so you really won't be able to complain about, you know, having or running out of saves or anything like that. So basically what it comes down to, if you didn't have a problem with any, any of the controls or anything like that in the previous Resident Evil games, you're a fan of the story, then you'll love Resident Evil Zero. If you're one of these people that's kind of casually played the series over the past few years, uh, you'll probably still find it a little bit problematic and not quite as enjoyable as the hardcore fans would. Mm -hmm.